In the early 1990s, I had the opportunity to see this mode of prayer, this feeling-based prayer, uh, enacted in, in a real-time situation. And I'd like to share the story because it, it perhaps best describes what otherwise is, uh, is a nebulous concept uh, regarding precisely how feeling-based prayer works in our lives. During the 1990s, early 1990s, the desert southwest was experiencing one of the worst droughts in history. And a Native American friend of mine invited me to join him one day in a place in the high deserts of northern New Mexico to share in a prayer of rain. He didn't have to ask me twice. I said, you bet, I'd love, I'd love to participate and see what this prayer is all about. So we met at a, uh, an agreed upon location and we hiked uh, through several uh, hundred thousand acres of beautiful high mountain desert sage until we came to a place that was so old uh, even the people today don't know who built this place. It was essentially a stone circle. And each stone was placed just as it was by the hands of the ancestors so long ago. And it was in this place that my friend began uh, his prayer. What he did was he removed his shoes, stepped into the circle in his bare feet. He honored all of his ancestors. He simply said, all of my ancestors, all of my ancestors. Honored the four directions. He turned his back to me, held his hand in a prayer position, just a few seconds. And then he turned around and looked at me and he said, I'm hungry, let's go get a bite to eat. And I said, I thought you were going to share this prayer. I thought you were gonna pray for rain. And he looked at me and he said, no. He said, because if we prayed for rain, rain could never happen. Because the moment you pray for something to occur, you've just acknowledged that it does not exist in that moment. And I thought about what he said. It made a lot of sense to me. If I say, dear God, please let there be peace in the world, what I'm saying in that moment is that peace isn't there. And I may inadvertently be empowering the very condition that I would like to change. And the same with the healing in my body or the body of my loved ones. So I asked my friend, I said, if you didn't pray for rain just then, what, what did you just do? What happened when you closed your eyes? And you turned your back to me just for those few moments. And what he said was this. He said, when I closed my eyes, I began to feel the feeling of what it feels like to have rain in our Pueblo village. He said, I smelled the smells of what it smells like when the rain falls off the earth and walls of our buildings. And I felt the feeling of what it feels like with my naked feet in the mud. There's so much mud because there's been so much rain. He said, in that way, I opened the door to the possibility to bring rain into our world. Well, I think about this mode of prayer a lot. Later that afternoon, something amazing happened. I was watching the weather maps and the drought that had happened for so long suddenly changed. We saw the high pressure system move across Utah and then dip down from Colorado into northern New Mexico and make a little U-turn and come right back up. We had rain that night. And we had rain all the next day. It rained and rained and I called my friend. And I asked him, I said, there's so much rain, the valleys are flooding, the roads are flooding. What in the world is going on? And he was quiet just for a moment. And he said, that's the part of the prayer. He said, I never quite figured out. So I have no way of scientifically validating that my friend's prayer had anything to do with that rain. But the correlations are so high. We see it happen so many times, we know there is an effect.